Today we're going to take a quick look at this Telguard TG-1B. This is a cellular alarm communicator for 4G and 3G networks. Basically, uh, from what I can tell, uh, what this does is you have your standard alarm system for your home. You have this doohickey. It communicates via the cellular network to their communication center which then gives you a text or an email saying your house has been broken into and, and or is on fire. And that also goes to their station who then contacts the emergency services appropriately. So it's pretty much what a normal alarm monitoring does, except it seems to be just over cellular. That seems to be the difference. Now, I don't know what kind of fees there were associated with this thing. Uh, is it revision G? Oh, well, anyway, apparently it's all UL listed and everything for uh, uh, being a security system and fire equipment. So let's see what we've got here for features. Full data reporting, interfaces, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, okay, well, I mean, the only thing of real in interest is that it can fall back to G GSM if uh, 3G and 4G fail. And, um, yeah, apparently you can listen in to a voice verification over cellular. Huh. I don't know if that actually connects to you, or to your place, or to your, um, the uh, company which um, is monitoring it. Data manufacturer, 24th week, or sorry, 24th day, 9th month, 2012. So it's not that old. One thing that I thought was really funny about this is... Okay, so this is the unit. Sorry, it's kind of washed out. This is the unit. And then you open the box and it's gigantic. It's just, it seems like the scale is just way off on this thing. Anyway, um, we've got kind of a beat up cardboard surround. And some stuff in the box. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, wait, there's more. There's more. All right, get rid of the box. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, congratulations on your selection of the Telegard. Telgard, sorry, I keep saying Tele. Telgard Interactive. Blah, 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 blah. Codes, zones. Oh, oh. Cellular service registration request. It doesn't. Oh, okay, here we go. Monthly test. Oh, no, these are just tests. I thought this was going to be plans or something. Rate plan selection. Select one of the following. Huh. It doesn't seem to say whether or not this is going to cost you money or not. Again, I assume you do. Unless they have a system similar to the Kindle where you get 3G data just for free uh, as part of owning the service. They have a deal. And this is the installation booklet. Atlanta, Georgia. That's where the company is. Blah, 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 blah. Explosive atmospheres. DC operation. Two-way voice. Okay, it so it does speak to the control panel. So it looks like the two-way voice thing does actually allow you to yell at people who are in your home. And other than that, is is kind of, it's just got like the programming mode and stuff. I don't actually have an alarm system, so I can't really test this. But it does have some of the formats it uses. Now, one thing uh, I haven't really... Oh, there's a little diagram of the board. Uh, I haven't really messed around with this, this thing too much other than to open it up and make sure the lead-acid battery, which is inside it, isn't leaking everywhere. Uh, so we have a basic installation guide, quick installation. See, it's got a small battery in it. And what else? Oh, these are just uh, some settings you can set to program the Telegard. Telegard. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't, I guess you have to program it through the control panel because there are no controls on this whatsoever unless there's a button on the inside. Uh, let's see. Upgrade incentive procedure. Remove the old 2G unit and then fill out the form and they give you 25 bucks. Oh, it's a uh, uh, next service invoice. Okay, so they do have a monthly fee. 
So that kind of verifies it. Oh, and they actually do want you to mail it to Georgia. Okay, so this is the unit. We've got a rather large antenna and um, a UL listed 12 volt AC 0 0.83 amp power supply. I knew that was in here, so I just went ahead and tinned a couple ends of speaker wire so we can wire into this thing later. See what this thing does when it's powered up. Now this thing just kind of pops off, I think. I don't know if it's supposed to, but it does. Hang on, let me just uh, brute force it in. There we go. So the front just says, high voltage present at phone lines. I highly doubt that, seeing as I do not have a phone line. All right, so we got the basic layout. Here's the nice uh, lead acid battery. And we've got a rather large motherboard. SIM card this is gonna be the cellular modem. Uh, probably the main CPU for the thing and some power supply stuff and a relay and these are the phone interfaces so I am going to first let's go ahead and check the battery because that is actually a very convenient size for a little 12, 12 volt sealed lead acid battery so if that thing's at all usable that'd be kind of nice let's see what we got uh, there. and there 0.2 volts. Okay, so that battery is toast. So much for that. And we got input AC. Input AC voltage connector. Hmm. I'm going to look up the pinout and wire in the, uh, the little adapter and we'll see what we can do with this thing. Looking at the manual, the pinout does not match this at all. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to take it out and take a little look at it. Even the uh, quick start, start guide has optional battery, AC, and some other stuff, yet it doesn't match that at all. So <laughs> give me a minute again, and let me see if I can decipher what the hell they're talking about. Aha, with the battery out, we can now see what the hell this is supposed to be wired in as. Now, I don't know why they, uh, the manual is completely different. Oh, I see. TG1. TG4. Does this actually say TG4 on the, uh, on the box? It does not. So my guess is whoever I bought this from on eBay did not realize that this is actually the wrong model. Okay, so that explains it. All right, let me get this stuff wired in. All right. Here goes nothing. Set my power meter to watts. And uh, let me see if I can, this uh, power adapter has this little screw in here to screw in so it can't accidentally fall out of the socket. I don't know if this is gonna block. So let me just see if this works. Yeah, hang on. Let me take off this little screw. That's better. Okay, contact. Oh, I hear a relay. I see lights. Oh, let's give it an antenna in case it wants to contact the mothership. Very important. Let me see. There's a little number, uh, a little uh, key on the front. So let's see what we're getting. Okay, so it says, it's got a bunch of status LEDs, but it also says there's more than we have. Okay, so LED one on is activated. So, oh no, it's flashing. Okay, so it was activation denied. That's what happened, system trouble, flashing. One flash. 
Okay, hang on, let me count these at one, two, one, two. Two flashes. Okay, low battery, we know that, because the battery is no good. Okay, so it looks like everything's working, it just won't activate, which doesn't surprise me, because I'm sure whoever owned it deactivated it. Uh, is anything getting warm on this thing? Let me see what the, uh, the battery is doing. Is it trying to charge it? Oh, it is. It's at 1.701 volts. So it is actually tempting to charge it. Oh, zero 02. Okay, looking at the board, we've got some kind of CPU here. Let's see if we can get this off. It is a something. Huh, I'm not sure what that is. It's some uh, custom labeled part. I'll have to look that up. We've got some what looks like flash memory or working memory and just a whole bunch of power stuff. We have some isolation stuff for the um, phone systems. Uh, this one hooks up to a digital dialer and this one hooks up to your phone line. A little SIM card tray with an unbranded SIM card with just some numbers on it. Probably the IEMI or whatever it's called. And there's a little coax antenna soldered onto this. This is just a, looks like a bought-in riser card with a cellular modem. And there's the relay and there's space for another relay that has some resistors under it. I wonder if they put resistors under this one too. And what else we got? A um, bunch of fuses, big fuse. These are the terminal blocks we're looking at. That's got a fuse too, probably for the battery or the main input. Uh, bridge rectifier. Nice uh, 105 degree rated caps. These look like they're uh, Panasonic's. Very, very good. If not the best. And that, that's about it. It's a nice board. We've got these... Uh, all these via, all this via stitching around the entire board to keep the uh, noise in or out, depending on how you look at it. And that's where the board is soldered on. Let me uh, see if I can take this thing off. Alright, that took a little doing. Uh, even with the Metcal, it did not want to melt all the solder completely to get it out through the uh, the holes. I mean, yeah, I could have pulled out my Heiko uh, desoldering pump and that probably would have worked a lot better, but uh, I can't be bothered. Uh, these things, for the most part, just popped out. And we can take a look at them now. Is this soldered on? It looks like this is just tabs, so this should just come off. So it looks like there's a GPS receiver in here. I think Skyworks makes GPS receivers. This is probably the 3G uh, and 4G chip. Let me just cut off this little bit of shielding over here. And it looks like there's some memory too. I'm not sure if that's flash or uh, what. Oh, no, that's a little ST. A micro, it's an ARM based uh, microcontroller, so that's probably doing the majority of the work. So this might in fact just be a plain um, cellular modem. And yeah, not much on it. Oh, it looks like the original manufacturer stuff is on here. Let's see if we can peel this off. Uh, wireless CPU. Oh, it runs OpenRT. That's impressive. Uh, and it's a uh, Q24 Plus. 
I'm sure we can find a data sheet for that. It's made by Wavecom. Although, obviously, they don't manufacture the components. They're just making the board, and there's provisions. For, you got the little teeny tiny, what is this, SMA connector, or whatever they're called. And it looks like you can hook up like a little, um, probably a little RF connector here. Instead, they just soldered here. And it just uses this little high density connector. And what does this say? Oh, Q24 Plus. Apparently they uh, standardized it. Oh, and it's only on the TG1, 4, and 7. Okay, well, there you have it. I mean, there's not much on this thing. I mean, it's really just a power supply and the uh, bad lead acid battery to keep it running. And basically it intercepts what the auto dialer is doing and makes a call through cellular as well. So that seems to be all it does. So I guess it's useful in a place where you have um, either unreliable phone systems, which is weird because usually in a place where you have unreliable phone systems, you're in the middle of nowhere and they usually have unreliable cellular. But, um, uh, or uh, in case you're really paranoid that they're going to cut your cables, that could be another reason. So, yeah, kind of an interesting product. It seems built very well. I mean, we've got um, the board's nicely done. It's all gold-plated and um, rather nicely organized. So, yeah. It's, uh, oh, there's a debug port, software debug port here that is most likely JTAG. Uh, I mean, although it could be running serial over it. There's also a little jumper here that I didn't see. Radio port. So this probably breaks out this connector. And yeah, not much else on it. It's a pretty simple design. I just picked it up because I think I paid something like five or six dollars for it shipped. So I figured what the hell, might as well do it. Let's see what uh, secrets it holds.